<clears throat> okay. In a previous video, we looked at the notion of a quadratic residue. So let's recall that definition. For an odd prime P, we say that A is a quadratic residue modulo P if there is a solution to the congruence X squared is congruent to A mod P. So in this video, we want to introduce this thing called the Legendre symbol. And it is defined as follows. So you have these parentheses and then A by P. And you have that's one if A is a quadratic residue modulo P, and it's negative one if A is not a quadratic residue mod P. In other words, it is a quadratic non-residue modulo P. So this uh, Legendre symbol A by P is really like a question. So it asks the question, is A a quadratic residue mod P or not? If it is, you get a positive one, and if it's not, you get a negative one. So let's look at an example real quick. So let's say P equals 7. Now let's calculate all the squares mod 7 of the numbers 1 through 6. So we get 1 squared is equal to 1, 2 squared is equal to 4, uh, 3 squared equals 9, which is congruent to 2 mod 7. <coughs> Um, 4 squared is equal to 16, which is again congruent to 2 mod 7. Um, 5 squared equals uh, 25. Notice 25 is congruent to 4 mod 7. And finally, 6 squared is equal to 36, which is congruent to 1 mod 7. So that means uh, 2, 4, and 1 are our quadratic residues, which means we would say 1 by 7 is 1, uh, 2 by 7 is 1, uh, 4, 7 is 1, but then uh, the other three numbers are quadratic non-residues, so 3 by 7 would be negative 1, 5 by 7 is negative 1, and 6 by 7 is also negative 1. So here we have our column of quadratic residues because they are perfect squares mod 7, and our column of quadratic non-residues because they are not perfect squares mod 7. Okay, good. So the next thing we're going to do before we end this video is look at one uh, nice uh, criterion for um, calculating whether or not something is a quadratic residue in the language of this Legendre symbol. Okay, so continuing on with a question of is something a quadratic residue in the language of this Legendre symbol, we have Euler's criterion. So Euler's criterion says that if you have an odd prime p and an integer that is not divisible by p, the Legendre symbol of a by p is congruent to a to the p mi minus 1 divided by 2 mod p. So let's look at the proof here. So uh, the first thing we want to look at is the case... 1, which is a by p equals 1. So the only two values we need to look at are 1 and negative 1. In other words, is a quadratic residue or is not a quadratic residue? So case number 1 is a by p is 1. In other words, it is a quadratic residue. So we have some number x0 such that x0 squared is congruent to a mod p. Good. Now the next thing we want to do is calculate a to the p minus 1 over 2 using this. So we have a to the p minus 1 over 2 is the same thing as x naught uh, squared to the p minus 1 divided by 2. But then using uh, exponent rules, we have this is the same thing as x naught to the p minus 1. Good. But then by Fermat's little theorem, we have this is congruent to 1 mod p. And just like I said, we used Fermat's little theorem in this step. Okay, good. So um, the next thing we want to look at is case number 2, which is when uh, a by p is negative 1. In other words, it's a quadratic non-residue. <clears throat> So, uh, this one is a little bit trickier, so we'll do the following. For each um, integer k between 1 and p minus 1, um, we have a unique solution. 
So we have a unique solution to the congruence Kx is congruent to A mod P. And so we know that because K is relatively prime to P, so that means it has an inverse mod P. In other words, we know exactly what our uh, unique solution is. Our unique solution is, in fact, um, K inverse times A mod P. And another thing we know is that this solution is not congruent to K mod P. So also, this solution x, let's call it x naught, um, is not congruent to k mod p. Because, check it out, if it were congruent to k mod p, we would have k squared as congruent to a mod p. But then it would be a quadratic residue, but that's exactly what we are not, we are assuming is not true. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll clean up the board and then we'll finish this off. We're actually almost done with this proof. Okay, so now we're going to look at case two of this proof. So we have a by p is negative one, so we've just established that for all one, for all k between one and p minus one, that kx congruent to a mod p has a unique solution, x naught, which is not congruent to k. So let's recall that if that is congruent to k, then we have k squared would be congruent to a mod p, which would tell us that a by p would be one. In other words, we'd have a quadratic residue, which would contradict um, our assumption for case two. Okay, so now the next thing that we'll notice is the following. All the numbers 1, 2, 3, p minus 2, p minus 1 can be split into factor pairs of A. And that's true exactly by what we proved before. So this number 3, for instance, can be replaced with k, and we can find the x naught that goes with 3, and then we'll remove those from the list. And then we'll move on to 4. 4 can be replaced with k. We can find the x naught solution for that, remove those two from the list. And we can do that until all the numbers are removed to the, by, from the list in pairs. And now what we notice is that that tells us that the product um, a to the p minus 1 over 2, which is a times a times a p minus 1 over 2 times. So each of these a's can be replaced with exactly one of those factor pairs, which will give us the product 1, 2, 3, all the way up to p minus 2 times p minus 1, which that is equal to p minus 1 factorial, obviously, but then by Wilson's theorem, we know that is negative 1 mod p. So let's see what we've established. We've established that a to the p minus 1 over 2 is congruent to negative 1 mod p, and that is exactly the same as the Legendre symbol. a by p is negative 1, so when a is a non-residue. Okay, good. So since this second case of the proof is so tricky, we're going to look through it with a concrete example. Okay. So now we're ready to look at our illustration of case two. So we'll take p to be seven and a to be five. So we know that a is a quadratic non-residue mod five. Now let's look at the, all the, pack, the factor pairs of a um, mod seven. And so we have one times five is equal to five, which is obviously congruent to five mod seven. We have two times six is 12, which is congruent to five mod 7, and finally we have 3 times 4 is also 12, which is congruent to 5 mod 7. So good, so the next thing that we're going to do is take 5 to the 7 minus 1 over 2, which is obviously 5 to the third power, and now we'll write this as 5 times 5 times 5. Now we're going to take each of those fives and write them with different factor pairs. So that's going to give us 1 times 5 times 2 times 6 times 3 times 4. And now we're going to look at each of these. Uh, we're going to rearrange this and look at it as follows. So that's going to be 1. And then after that we'll do 5 times 3. And then after that, we will do uh, 2 times 4 
times 6. Now notice that 5 times 3 is 15, which is congruent to 1 mod 7. 2 times 4 is 8, which is congruent to 1 mod 7. So that makes this whole thing congruent to 6, which is congruent to negative 1 mod 7. And that's a nice illustration of the second tricky case of this proof.